Okay. So, by this three probability distribution, we have already said that in this three probability distribution, you have all the possible outcome with you. You know, you can know you can know the possible outcome. Therefore, you can calculate all the probabilities. So, is when you list all the possible outcome and their probability, uh, that is this three probability distribution. For example, look at uh, the uh, coin we talk about. The coin follows binomial distribution because there are only two possible outcomes. So if I just say F A half is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that's all. That's binomial distribution. The same thing with um, the sex, anything that is yes or no, anything that is either two possible outcomes, they follow binomial distribution. Please, who is making noise? I don't know why. Just... Let's look at binomial distribution. It shows the probability of every possible number of sources in an experiment. When we say experiment now, you should be able to know what we mean by it. You are trying to collect data. Like somebody tossing a coin is performing an experiment. I've already explained this word, being used in probability. So it shows the probability of every possible number of sources in an experiment in which there are only two possible outcomes to a trial, sources of failure. So the one, there's nothing like, success of failure is just a matter of convenience. If, let's say, I'm considering male and female, if the, the sex of interest is male, male will be success, female will be failure. If the sex of interest is female, female will be success, male will be failure, that's just it. So if you are talking of male, uh, people that pass exam or fail, if the people you are interested in, people that fail the exam, that will be the success. Why the people that pass will be failure. The enemy people that pass you are looking for that will be success. So the word success has nothing to do with whether, whether something succeeds or not. You just to say, okay, two possible outcomes. A binomial distribution has these characteristics. Now, probability of the event is. Somebody's chatting, sir. As I said, we take a 10 or 15 minutes break in between next time. And should we take it now? <laughs> Do we take 10 minutes break or 15 minutes break now? Come back. It's not important, oh, sir. sir. 10 it's minutes, not sir. Let's continue, sir. Let's continue, sir. Uh, let's continue and finish up. And let's continue. Let's start with the coffee break. Love today. Okay, okay. Friend, okay, we continue now. Okay. Uh, let's continue so that I can finish. So, so you will see this formula, you know, n factorial over r factorial plus n minus r factorial raised to power p raised to power q and p raised to power q and raised to power r q raised to power n minus r. It's just a jargon. If it, it's, it's very simple anyway, and uh, well, I wouldn't know if they even want you to be calculating me. I don't like you calculating that because uh, all you need to know is to know how it works and how do you use computer to run it. But uh, n is the number of tire. N you see now is the sample size. Do you get? You know when you are so when you say number of tire, that is the sample size. You remember when I say that uh, experiment. The number of tries, the number of the experiment, the number of experiment. I've already told you if your sample size is 400. For each of the variables, the number of trials will be is 400. Because you ask, you carry out that experiment for 100 people, 100 times. It's the same thing if you throw something 100 a coin, you throw a die 100 times, that number of trials. So N is the sample size, which is the number of trials. Number of observed sources is the R. Yes, for example, now if you want to say you are talking about prevalence of uh, hypertension in the community, the sample size is n. That the, no, the people that are hypertensive, the number that are hypertensive, that will be r. That is the number of observed sources. So the person that is hypertensive is your sources here. Now, probability of success on each trial is the p. Can you see number that out of the sample size, number that have the hypertension is the r. But the probability is the, the probability of success in each trial. That is, 
if I just examine something, I just take the, I, I tend to a particular woman now in the community, what is the probability that that, uh, that person will be hypertensive? That's all. For each trial, what is the probability? So somebody, well, we have agreed with somebody, see, say you can watch, that's why we are recording it, you can watch and watch. Somebody say assimilation is very low. In certain minutes, assimilation is very low. Number of observed success, probability of success or nature, probability of failure, you know, Q is probability of failure, which is one minus P, or 100% minus P, simple. If you're able to, you know what factorial mean? When you say 10 factorial, it means 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 6, 5 times 4 times 6 times 2 times 1. That's all. That's the meaning of factorial. So when you just look at it, it's just what you, you just feel if they give you a scenario, you can just put and calculate the probability and calculate the, the prob uh, probability. Now, the distribution. This, if, look at the graph now. If the P is 0 0.5, that's probability of success for each trial is 0 0.5 and sample size is 20. That blue, that's how this is what we do. If the P is 70% and sample size is 20, that's green. If the P is 0 0.5 and sample size is 14, you will see that as the sample size increases, number of the sample size increases, even the binomial distribution want to follow normal distribution. Actually, any distribution, once the sample size is increasing, we have approximately normal distribution. Let me just skip this one, but I will give you the slide, you can read it. Let's just talk about um, Poisson distribution. Probability distribution of a number of events which occur randomly and independent in time or space at some average rate. For example, the number of deaths in a town from a particular disease per day, the number of admissions to a particular hospital typically follow a person distribution. You know, it's this person which I was presenting in my lecture the, uh, on Tuesday and Thursday and yesterday. And um, I may mention for some of you that were there, I may mention that uh, this Poisson distribution is so, so useful, you know, for public health, because when we talk about number of occurrence of a disease, especially real disease, because it's for real occurrence. So it approximate, though it approximate by normal distribution, but if it's real, it will be Poisson. Something that will have followed by normal distribution, if it is real, it will follow Poisson. Somebody says, sir, is times zero included when multiplying the poison? No, it's not included. Even when the zero by two, you cannot, if you multiply by zero, you have canceled everything. Times zero is not included. It's up to one, even the one set, because you know that anything multiplied by one is one. No, it's up to one no, from the beginning. It will stop at one, it's not zero. When you multiply anything by zero, anything is. <laughs> If it's zero, it will be zero then, because anything multiply, even if it's one trillion, you multiply by zero, that becomes zero. So zero is not included in factorial. Now, I said that uh, for public health, you are in, more interested in the rate, you know, the rate of something new, uh, occurring with Lassa fever, how many cases of cholera, uh, all those things, you are more interested. But clinician like binomial distribution, most of their team, because their own is treated, not uh, diabetic, non diabetic, hypertensive, not hypertensive, die or survive, successful, not successful surgery. You know, that's the, uh, because uh, clinicians like to documenting. That's why most of the regression you see in clinical literature is uh, logistic regression. It's not even linear regression. So you discover that uh, most of this linear regression is in public health or either linear or poison regression. The public health. So as many as this Poisson regression is very, very important. Now the Poisson distribution very variable is the count of the number of events that occur independently and randomly in time or space. It can be a time or space. 
the particular area, geographical area, or over a period of time. Now, the Poisson formula is very simple. Somebody is making a song. The Poisson formula. I told you it's zero one. Zero one one zero twenty seven. So the formula here is probability of event occurring new case a, a particular uh, of a of a number of event occurring provided the formal rate is mu is e over uh, raised to power minus mu multiplied by mu raised to power s over x factorial. Now, I have an example there I will, I will show you. Let me just go to the example. Because sometimes when you arrive, I don't like telling people formula. The reason is that you can scatter people's brain. When you understand the first place, presume the formula will become nothing to you. In fact, you can even write it close to how I write it. Look at an example here. The average number of cases of Lhasa fever in your community is two per year. What is the probability that exactly three cases will occur in the community the following year? Look at it, the average number of the cases per year historically is what you see now. The average is the mean, that's why you will use the mean. But sometimes you people use lambda. No, use lambda as the mean. That's the average, the average number in the past. The X is the number of expected cases now. The question you ask is what's the probability that three cases will occur? That X number of cases will occur. So that's why with this from a probability of X number of cases, provided, provided this is the mean number of cases in the past is this. The E is Q is a constant, Q last number. So you go and find out what the last number is a constant. <clears throat> now, all you know is to put it to put, look at the formula now. You have constant raised to power x, that's the average, minus x, which is average. Then the average raised to power 3, then divided by 3 factorial. So the probability is 0 0.180. That's just it. And it's very simple. Now, there are some things you need to know about it. Just like uh, in any other uh, distribution, once the sample size is becoming higher and higher, it looks more like normal distribution. Here, what do you call in this graph now? What do you call lambda here is actually the average amount, the average. If the average is one, one case, this is the red, look at the red is the distribution. If it is four cases, if it is 10, the more the number of cases in the in the past, the more it will likely it will approximate normal distribution. So just like the way you sometimes when you have the count and the count is, and when we say, okay, number of cases, if the number is big enough, you may even treat it as if it's a normal, a normally distributed something. But most of the time, when we have the number of cases that are very, uh, very rare, it follows Poisson distribution. And mind you, the Poisson distribution look more, it will look more like a normal a binomial distribution if the number, the, the occurrence of the case of the event is very rare. Other form of uh, this thing we have here is. Uh, exponential distribution, geometric distribution, hypergeometric, which I don't want us to talk about later. But what I will do now, I will send some question to you, which we are going to solve later. I will have to solve. We will solve them. I wouldn't know. Nobody has communicated to me the modality of uh, maybe you will go, did, did you write exam? You write, have written exam, whatever. To me, at this level, is how you can use computer 
to run this thing and bring that result, uh, which is the practical we're going to do also. To me, that's the most, but I will discuss with Dr. Sota, I don't know what they are, but uh, I will provide some questions to you, some things for you to work on. Later in our tutorial, we work on them together. Somebody is chatting so that you go and rest. Because is there a way to know that the particular person needs to do? Thank you, sir. Ah. Oh, God bless you, sir. Is, Thank you, sir. When they say that, uh, when you see that scenario, I'm giving a scenario now. You know, okay, look at the two scenarios. I gave a scenario for binomial distribution. I think there's a scenario for binomial. Okay, there's no scenario for binomial distribution. Is there any scenario for binomial distribution? Okay, for example, let's say they ask you a question. They say probability that somebody is apathetic in a community is this, is, uh, is 0 0.3, 30 percent. If uh, I selected, and I say that if I examine 800 or 300 adult in that region, and they ask you, what is the probability that 40 would be hypertensive? Does it make sense now? So you see, they, most of them when they present anything binomial, they may mention the probability two times. They will tell you the probability of, uh, they may not call it probability, they may say that the prevalence, know that the prevalence is probability, prevalence of a disease is 30% in the community. What is the probability that 350 uh, out of 300, you sample of the disease. It's, it's very clear that this binomial is very clear. So for Poisson, they will tell you most of the come the mean, the average rate of a disease in the country, in the community is this in the previous year or normally. So what is the probability that four cases will occur? You will know. You will know that this follow follow poison disease. Most of the time. The value they will give for is really for real event. You're going to see that they will say they will not even be for poison. They will not tell you that it is the prevalent. They say the number of occurrence of the disease normally in the community is this. What is the probability that in the next one year you will have this case? You know it's poison. It's very simple. That's why me, I, I place more emphasis on you understanding the, the logic behind a particular thing. Whichever way they come you'll be able to tackle it. I will present some questions to you and uh, we'll see them. Somebody is raising hand. Who's she now? Go on. Go on. You want to talk? Somebody say you prefer the practical. Me, I don't know. Because, uh, you know, I'm not in the academies. You know, I don't even like it. So, so my own way, I like the practical aspect. So I'm just saying, I don't know the modality. <laughs> In your in your this thing, I'm coming. If in your exam you do write at postgraduate level for your PhD, you see I have written exam. I don't know. Maybe you still write a conduct exam for you for for statistics. I don't know. I will have to find out. No, no, no. No, no. We don't write exam, so it's formative. Uh, what a uh, sir. Hello, it's sir. I'm going to some statistics. Yes, go on. I'm eager, sir. Yes, we will, we will prefer an, an assignment. Sites. So, we'll if you give an assignment, it will automatically serve as exams. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank it's, you. Not, it's not me. I'm just as I will ask them. It's not me. Whatever the, your, your school say. <laughs> but I will let you know anyway. So, to, uh, people raise hand. Two people yes, so I, I wanted to find out when you were calculating the when you try to explain this poison um, formula, the factorial thing, how you arrived at six. Does it mean three, three times when two? You say three times two times one. Factorial three factorial means three times two times one. Okay. 
You understand me? When you say nine factorial, that means nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Uh, Whatever uh, something factorial, you begin to multiply it by the lower one until you reach one. The lower numbers. Okay. Yes, until you so three factorial means three times two times one, which is three times two six six times one six. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any other one? Somebody, another person raised hand the other time. Who is? Yes, sir. My hands are raised, sir. Okay, go on. Now, since you're really interested in the practicals and how to, you know, reproduce this thing, can you take us on? Can you fix a lecture with us on SPSS? I'm, so it's of this is, I'm if, sure. if you look at it in the schedule, they say that there will be time for practical SPSS. So I will take you SPSS. Dr. Sota will take you with starter. I will take you with SPSS. Very good. Thank so you. So it's going, it's going to be part. Let's finish the lecture first. The way they did is that lecture finished first, then we have to do it at the practical session. We organize it. Uh, or is it everything that you people say is three weeks? It's uh, Dr. Israel. Let me stop uh, recording. Dr. Israel.